All right, so this, I'm still talking to Chris from Noise. So this is this little ambient background, and it's made up of actually two sounds. Um, it's a little sample I created that I put into a tip-top uh, sampler, and it's being da da da. It's actually being triggered off of the uh, a little sequence in the Arturia beat step. So I'm using the sequencer to do that. Uh, to da da da, which is in my uh, braids um, uh, imitation braids uh, module called plates. Um, so I'm just using a little. Uh, uh, algorithm in there to play the da 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 and it blends perfectly with this sample which I think is made from a guitar actually through Weird Reverb. So I tuned it all to be in the key of G. Da 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 da. So that's sound number one. I'm gonna step out and here's the next one. I love this sound. So I've had this patch in here for like a month. Um, so it's a sequence that doesn't quite repeat, but it has a shape to it. But it's all based on the uh, klepdias. So the klepdias is getting triggers from uh, my clock module, and I keep using using a, a trigger. I keep interrupting the the uh, the LFO cycle. So and it's kind of quasi random. So it's a series of of resets that keep it from ever quite finishing and repeating. And quite simply, I'm just taking the voltage out from that into a sync iter, and that's the entire module you're hearing with a little bit of, of, of reverb added to it. Um, super simple. I'm gonna step out, go to another sound. So, a little melody uh, being played on the BIA. Can I say BIA? You know what that stands for. And this is actually getting an inverted uh, voltage from the Klepdia. So it's it's linked um, melodically, but, but in mirror to that sound I was just playing before. But rhythmically, it's getting triggered a little bit differently. So if I put the two sounds up together, They make this kind of cool little back and forth because they're both being triggered out of the klepdias, but through an inverted thing. Uh, I'm using uh, I'm using your your buy output instead of your uni output. So it's not exactly a mirror, but it it comes across exactly the way I like it. Okay. So that's that's that. The rest of it. This came up completely by accident. So uh, if you have, you know, the ornaments in crime is like this little multi-algorithmic uh, multi, uh, uh, voltage tool. And it has a built-in little arpeggiator sequencer inside of it um, that's triggered and I just have it set. And it's just really sending out to a pretty much straight ahead little triangle wave oscillator, nothing else. This is as naked as it, as it gets. Then I just have a little slow LFO uh, turning, uh, turning a VCA up and down. And what oscillator? Thank you for asking. Um, that particular sound is coming off of, there's a, a company called Recovery. Uh, they mostly are known for their guitar pedals, and, uh, but they just came out with this uh, Jupiter, and it's a four oscillator, four you, just distinct oscillators, each with a sine and triangle output. So that's just going into a quad VCA and an LFO is just getting it to kind of rise and fall in a pleasant, slow manner. But it, it, I love the, the little shimmer to it. And then the final thing is just this little, little tick tick sound, which is uh, actually my uh, Akami Taiko. Um, being triggered uh, again off of my clock module. And then I have another LFO that's adjusting the, the timbre up and down, which by the way, that's something I do. You can never have too many LFOs, you know? You can never have too many LFOs or s sources of slow randomness for this, for this very reason. I, 
we were talking about you know how much I don't like anything static. So this sound would not be nearly as cool if I wasn't giving it a little bit of variation. So those are my elements, you know, some high, some low. What LFO are you sending it? Uh, it is getting LFO from my Batumi Quad LFO. Thank you for, thank you for asking. Uh, it's a lovely Quad LFO, um, very handy. I love Batumi. You can um, clock it off of, you know, it's very good at, at uh, taking a clock input and turning it into a nice continuous uh, sinusoidal waveform. And um, yeah. You know, we're going through uh, a few effects on, on, on the modular and then a couple of effects I've, I've done there. Now I'm sitting here at uh, my computer running Logic and um, we have clock from Logic going into my beat step, the beat step running all of the modules, all the modules coming back into here. And if I hit go, now I have access to everything on its own fader. And I can start to come up with blends and I can continue to do more effects until I'm ready to go ahead and print audio, which um, I kind of wait till the end to start printing audio because I may want to continue to, you know, manipulate, experiment, or I may want to experiment here. It's all good. tabletop machine so and I've done everything I've tuned everything into the key of G so the cool thing so everything is running continuously there's no starting or stopping and that's because I can decide later after I've recorded the audio uh, I don't want to yell after I've recorded the audio uh, then I start to do more, think about arranging. So I'm still, you know, everything is still live and in real time. Let me record a little part in MIDI, just uh, some, some uh, strings, all right? So I'm gonna hit, uh... so there's all the modular layers just turned up kind of randomly. So I've recorded some MIDI. And so, you know, now I have that thing you've been hearing. And I like that, so let's pretend I like that. So now um, I can go back in, forget all the other stuff, um, and I can decide, maybe I just want, you know, one layer, one element. are coming in and out um, and again this is that thing of never being static things are always either growing or receding ebb and flow for me it's all about ebb and flow so now I'm just automating faders with the live synths coming in but you know that there's going to be little timing issues and I'm going to want to uh, record uh, tracks in so for example um, I can start I can put this track into record and uh, I think it'll record <laughs> There it, is. there it is, there's element number one. So now what I can do is once it's in there, I can decide, well, where do I want it to come in? Do I want it to come in a little, you know, here on this bar? Yeah, sure. And 
so on. I will just keep going through idea at a time and decide maybe I'm doing it to picture. Maybe I'm watching uh, a picture and as somebody walks in, I might want to bring up one of those sonic elements and then bring it out or just maybe I just want the piece to feel like it's building and building slowly over time because I'm trying to add tension or lushness. In this case, it's kind of pretty. Um, and and that's it, really. So when I talk about arranging, I'm really talking about... Um, let's see, I can, I can put all these tracks into real quick, can't I? Um, So it records at the volume that's incoming, not from here. All right, so there, now everything, everything is in audio. Everything is in audio. So now I can go through and, um, you know, make very specific uh, edits and cuts. And I can say, you know, take this out here and bring it in there and mute this. And, you know, that little wishy thing, you know, we don't need to have that wishy thing there. That wishy thing can be here where that part stops and, and so on and so on. So I'm just going through and continuously experimenting. You know, we talked about zooming in and, and kind of making sure things are on the beat, which in this case, very close. There, oh, done. It's in perfect, perfect time. So, um, I mean, there you basically have uh, a simple, elegant, fairly creative way to integrate between the modular world and my in-the-box world of orchestral samples and, well, whatever plugins I want to use, and um, and that's been that's been my way of of working, keeping it not recorded until the last minute, experimenting, going back and forth, tweaking, playing around, varying, coming up with variations until I'm happy, printing it, which took zero time. I mean, you have to do it in real time, but other than that and then going in and deciding what comes in where, and then going in and starting to automate and, you know, fading things in, maybe having something get a little louder each time it comes back in, all of that. And that, that is, for me, my sort of best of both worlds um, approach. You know, guys like, guys like, you know, Matt Lang and a lot of other modular guys, uh, well, you know, Matt would tell you he's a guitar player first and foremost. Uh, I haven't been able to break the news to him that that's not how a lot of people look at him, but, um, you know, he does everything. He lives in the Pro Tools world. So he lives in a world that is primarily, if not exclusively, audio. Um, you know, I, I'm using this in an audio capacity as well. Um, but for me, the MIDI stays MIDI up until we're done. I don't print. I rarely print those parts because those stay quite fluid. Fluid. And also there's the issue that um, when I'm working to picture, sometimes the picture changes and suddenly an arrangement has to open back up. So audio is uh, just too much of a commitment for me. Uh, so that's, that's kind of my, my hybrid approach uh, between it. But I gotta say the technology, it's easy, it works very smoothly. Um, you know, now there are more and more uh, modules to kind of bridge the gap between um, MIDI and CV, as well as audio to back into a computer, you know, uh, A to D conversion right in the, um, right in the modular in your, in your frame. So, you know, it only gets better, it only gets simpler to, to me, but my approach is to keep it as simple as possible anyway.